The Hickory Chair by Lisa Rowe Frostino. Sundays when I was small, that grand of mine was good at hiding. The first time I played hide and seek with her and the other grandchildren, she disguised me as the pillow on the bed that Grandpa had carved long ago for my father. Nobody found me. When I was the seeker, I could almost always sniff everyone out. Even Gran, the time she stood inside her robe behind the bathroom door, she had a good, alive smell. Lilacs with a whiff of bleach. I love Gran's smell and her warm face when we played touch your nose at the gold mirror and her salty kisses when we sat on Gramp's old army trunk in the attic and listened to the wind sing on the roof. Most of all, I loved her molasses voice as she read to me out loud. You're my favorite youngest grandchild, Louise, and this is my favorite chair, she tell me. Gramps carved it from a hickory that once grew on this very spot. She clapped her hands together. Lilac and bleach danced around. Every time I sit in this chair, I lean back, shut my eyes, and see that old hickory tickling the belly of the sun. Me too, I said. I really did see it. Even though I was born blind, you got blind sight, said Gran, and she tickled my nose. So the Sundays went until one day in school, I felt my father's shadow cold on my cheek. He told me Gran had died. At the funeral, I touched her hand to say goodbye. It was cold and smelled too much of lilacs, not enough of bleach. Afterwards, the family went to Gran's house to hear her wheel. Around her rocker, it was hard to breathe. I sat on my father's lap. When every eye had been quite dry, Uncle Lofton blew his nose one last time and said, Remember how Gran used to surprise us with notes hidden under pillows, between book pages, in pockets, and anywhere else she could connive? My father laughed. Once she sneaked into Grant's workplace and left him a love note in the wrong lunchbox. Remember I began when I was a baby and Gran was rocking me to sleep in her favorite chair, but when she stood up to take me to the crib, the chair came with me. My mother picked up the story. You'd poke this hole right here, her fingernail scratched wood, and made a ball of batting in your little fist. Well, sighed Aunt Candy May. let's see, what's to become of that chair now? Her purse clicked open. I knew what it was because leather and peppermint smells jumped right out. Paper crackled like hickory limbs in the wind, and Aunt Candy May commenced to read Grand's will. It didn't take long. To each of my favorite people, I leave a note hidden in one of my favorite things. Keep those things. Sell whatever's left and split the money between Candy May, Lofton, and Louise Sr., that rascal grand, my father said fondly. Smells swirled with excitement as we all dashed off to search grand's favorite things. As the others peered into nooks and crannies, I felt the mirror slowly inch by inch until I pinched a bud of paper under a gold leaf, hoping it was my note. I rushed to Aunt Candy May. She read, For my favorite middleist grandchild, that was Cousin Lucille. After that, the grandchildren raced to the attic and searched the armor trunk where we and Gran had listened to the wind sing. Stowed beneath the canvas line, I found a note for my favorite grandson, born on Tuesday, Cousin Bill Bob. I found a slip of paper holding a place in the tattered Bible where Gran had recorded her favorite stores for my favorite tallest son my father believe it or not nobody else had found any notes yet i told you that grand of mine was good at hiding louise did grand tell you where to look my brother asked no but she said i could go blind but she said i got blind sight i answered if that's what it is, I'm closing my eyes. My brother hurried off to use blind sight on the bed. Gramps had carved for our father. When Gran had hidden me the first time, I played hide and seek. Remembering that, I hoped Gran had left my note there. 
But the note was... But the note my brother coats from behind a knot in the headboard said, For my favorite eldest grandson, whose father snored here, my brother. Now it seemed that the entire family had got blind sight. Before long, they all had their notes, all except for me. I was a finder, but not a keeper. How could Grand forget her favorite youngest grandchild? I cried. She couldn't, said my father. Mark my words. That note will turn up. We searched everywhere, even Grand's sewing machine, her bronze lamps with fringe shades, her kitchen table with six rickety chairs. Both there was only thing left, but there was... But there was only one thing left that I thought Gran would want me to have. Gramps had carved it from a hickory that tickled the sun. The air around it was hard to breathe. I held my breath and felt Gran's favorite chair inch by inch carefully as if it were made of dried leaves. I dug up a nickel, the cap of a pinion, a hairpin, a button, and at last, a script of paper. The air suddenly tasted light and sweet. Aunt Candy May read, Bacon, soda, salt, bleach. Oh, Louise, we're so sorry. Louise is the youngest, said my brother. Could Grand have left the notes before he was born and then forgotten to add his? Silence sucked everyone's breath away, and the air curdled in my throat. I ran out of Grand's house. Many Sundays, we searched for the note over and over to no avail until it came time to sell the rest of Grand's things. Just pick out something you want, Louise, said my father. Anything at all. Carefully, I climbed onto Grand's favorite chair and leaned back. The cushion side, a good clean smell, lilacs with a whiff of bleach. Grand's shape was rocked into the seat. As I jiggled to fit, I heard a molasses voice pour out. You're my favorite youngest grandchild, Louise. The, la the lost note no longer mattered. In that chair, I was on Grand's lap again. Now I am as old as Grand when she hid her messages. Not so long ago, when I thought my favorite youngest grandchild was asleep, she poked her hand in this hole right here and made a ball of batting in her little fist. When I unfolded her fingers, I found a wad of paper, and I swear it smelled of lilacs and a whiff of bleach. For my favorite youngest grandchild with blind sight. <laughs>